I want to just talk briefly about Archer's Paradox. Ever since the first bow was ever shot, Archer's Paradox has been a problem with shooting arrows. Originally, bows did not have any cutout in them like this for an arrow to go through, uh, often called a center cut, and this one's pretty close to center cut. Long bows generally do not have center cuts. Recurves like this one do. Um, and I think it was thought, I would assume that it was thought, that whenever the um, first center cuts came out many years ago, uh, thought was, well, this Archer's Paradox is going to go away. And what is Archer's Paradox? Well, originally, when the arrow set on a bow, it set off to the side like this. Uh, all longbows, I think, are pretty much like that now. It's set off to the side. So if you wanted to shoot at something out here, the arrow initially came out this way, but the spine of the arrow was made such so it would flex significantly, and it would come out, it would flex back this way, and then this way, and then this way, and the vein's job was to eventually straighten that out and continue to adjust the spine by the uh, the actual stiffness of the arrow, the length of the arrow, the weight of the uh, broadhead or point that's being shot, all combined with the draw length and the strength of the bow, and eventually get everything down to what's called having a tuned arrow, where it will make essentially a straight shot through a piece of paper at a certain distance out there. And that, that was very cumbersome. Plus, arrow spines differed slightly and the draw lengths would differ slightly. And true pinpoint accuracy was very difficult to obtain. So, eventually, the center, um, center cut came in like this and the arrows could come out straight and I assume people thought oh this is going to take care of it all and the answer is no it didn't it, it took care of some of it but it didn't take care of all of it because the 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 arrow would still flex back and forth just from all that energy coming onto the knock and so when it came out if it had a broadhead on it, it would pull over to one side initially, one or the other, and the broadhead would hit somewhere differently than the field point, usually significantly different. So people would have to end up tuning their arrows and, and all to uh, the broadhead that they're going to shoot. Plus, once again, the differences in spine, etc., all came in and created um, problems that cause larger groups. So, when we transitioned to crossbows, and I've been shooting crossbows for 38 years, the first crossbows I shot, the, the um, Barnett Wildcat, which I kept for like less than a month, uh, and then uh, went to the PSC Foxfire series, um, the, they just had two points of rest. They had Archer's Paradox also. Broadhead shot much differently than field points, and they were pretty hard to tune. Um, eventually, crossbows came along, and I have two very, very good, high-quality crossbows back here that I have shot for years. And there's no criticism of these crossbows. I love both of these crossbows. Uh, this is a Bulldog uh, 400 uh, Excalibur. And the arrow lays along this rail. And now the arrow cannot flex nearly as much. It, it, it has the arrow hold down spring up here to help it not bend up. Uh, and it's held on the sides this way. And it certainly can't go down through the barrel. Yet still, pictures of arrows coming off of traditional railed crossbows like this show a fair degree of archer's paradox still occurring. The things are still flexing. Still need to have 
quite a bit of uh, fletching to, to try to get that under control. And that fletching that is getting it under control has to be offset quite a bit to the point that veins like blazer veins set an offset were, were used because they had a lot of control. They're excellent veins and they quickly stabilize the arrow. But still, Archer's Paradox existed. Um, and it does cause any spine difference, any fletching difference, etc., to um, cause groups to get larger. A man named Jeff Anderson back in the 1990s created a vertical bow that had an enclosed rail all the way out, just like these SWAT crossbows have. He had that rail on there, and when that bow was shot, that arrow was contained in that, and it could not flex. And that's where the SWAT crossbows come in and are so unique, different than every other crossbow. I'm going to show this crossbow, and we're going to try to get a close-up where you can see the enclosed rail down inside. That rail going down through there is almost 24 sixty-fourths of an inch in diameter. I cannot get a 24 arrow down it. Arrow, arrows are measured uh, like a 22 arrow is 22 sixty-fourths and 23 is 23 sixty-fourths. I cannot get a 24 down that. Um, I can barely get a 23. This crossbow is the new X1. It has a barrel and it even has a, an enclosure on the uh, riser right here where it, where it comes out. It's fully contained in there. So when you shoot a um, arrow out of one of these and it goes down, it's, the most it can move is a little less than 1 64th of an inch. And with this 50% let off and the new SWAT X1 being more gentle as it goes down, that arrow is essentially coming out absolutely straight with no archer's paradox and it takes virtually no vein control to keep it going straight. Therefore, the veins can have very slight offset like this arrow right here. And this is a factory arrow. It has virtually no offset. This is the exact one that comes with the uh, X1 right here. And it's just about as straight as can be. On my arrows, I've used a much smaller vein even yet, the, the uh, bonding heat vein. And these have so much less drag than a regular arrow, regularly fletched arrow, that when I use a scope that is a um, crossbow specific scope, I use a uh, speed, have to use a speed setting on it of about 30 to 40 greater than uh, the actual speed of the arrow because there's so little drag, its trajectory is that much flatter. The same thing when I use a HHA optimizer or a Raven jack plate, I have to use tapes that are much faster. This is what allows the incredible accuracy of these crossbows. Uh, you can just buy arrows off the shelf at, at a store and they will do really quite well. Uh, of course, I do better with the, the better the arrow, the more accurate, but still, uh, off the shelf arrows, these arrows that even, that come with this crossbow uh, will group an inch and a half at 100 yards. Custom, custom arrows can make a little better than an inch. Archer's Paradox is a big deal with crossbows. Killer Instinct has put that to rest. This is the only crossbow that has it. The SWAT X1 should be anybody's consideration who's wanting to get rid of that problem, the residual remaining problem with shooting arrows. Thank you. Hi, I wanna show what an arrow does in a uh, SWAT barrel. This is, um, this is a um, 
killer instinct arrow right here. I just spray painted it with yellow paint. Didn't look very good, so I painted it with some white paint on top of it. We're gonna put it in the crossbow and I'm gonna shoot it. And if it does like every other time I've done this, it's gonna put a big scrape mark where the arrow tries to bend in the barrel and scrapes paint off. Uh, this paint is hard enough I cannot scrape it off with my thumbnails, and I have some pretty good thumbnails. Uh, they're strong, etc. And you're also going to get to see loading of a SWAT crossbow. This is the XP. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one, but this is all it takes to load a SWAT crossbow. Just put the arrow down in the barrel like this, let it go, then push the arrow latch, the arrow drops in, and now it's fully loaded. It's ready to shoot. And let's just see what happens. I should be able to hit the target from here. So I'll take it off safety. It's off. I'll go down and get the arrow and let's see if we have a scuff mark. Unfortunately, it went pretty far in the target. I tried for it not to. Do I have it? Oh, I can see one, one of the little scuffs because I've seen them enough in the past. Uh, this little scrape right here and this little place right in here, usually it's a straight line. I've not been able, I even blunted the tip of the arrow and, and it went in far enough that unfortunately it, um, it, it rubbed off some of the marks. But here's one of the straight line marks that it made when it bent while it was being being shot. And then we have another part right here that's a pretty good little hit. Um, so that's it. I wish it were more clear cut than that. I, w I wish I had a target that would stop it like by here and then we would really see it. But anyway, that's it.